ring, ring, ring. Banana tux. Oh my god. <laughs> It's, it's just tucks in a banana hammock. Oh, dude, they're fused together. It's just a testament to the arrogance of mankind. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by the man up north in Canada, Canada's roughest writer, sometimes the smelliest, Mm. He's back from Vegas, all, more all, than that out of 13. And Pedro Mateus down in Britannia <laughs> land on the Isle, Windy Island this week. <laughs> Very windy island. This I is a true thing, hear the wind And uh, <laughs> you at home, joining us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. That's Shot Rum Dynamic. They were the brilliant part of this nightmare train, which is about to pull off the rack. We got a big show this week. But the big news is you came back from Vegas. I did. Yeah, I, I got flown out there. I got to stay in a five-star hotel for um, four days, mm. um, three of which were paid by another company, one of which I'm going to I'm gonna freaking comp to the company because screw that. I'm not paying $300. Um, but yeah, no, it, 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 was, it was fun. I didn't get to experience the full Vegas milieu because, you know, you're mostly there for work. Mm-hmm. So you're doing the work stuff. Um, if you, if you want to hear the full travelogue, you got to check out the pre-pre super shows and but I gotta, I, I, I do have a story. Me and the guy I was traveling with, we we're walking down the strip. Okay. And there, there's, there's, there's a place called the Piano Bar, and in between, uh, in between the actual musical acts that perform there, they do karaoke. Oh, oh. boy, do they do karaoke? Do they do like uh, regular or uh, actual like IRL? I'm drunk and high karaoke. I'm pretty sure that dude I'm gonna tell you about was drunk. <laughs> Because <laughs> you, you 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 know you know that you know that song I've been waiting for a girl like you to come into my life. I've been waiting. Oh yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, this this guy tried to sing it. He tried to hit the high note, and he failed spectacularly. Oh man, was... I can I, I can nail it. <laughs> oh, it, 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 it was so... just give out completely. And, and went... Oh yeah, it was. It was, it was so good that that, that, that guy that guy see you, you can't here's the thing you don't have to be good at karaoke you just got to give it your all no no one's expecting you to be a good singer you just got to fucking get up there and belt dude that that is like you know, see how bad i mean if you're bombing dig into it i mean no, it just oh, yeah, yeah. Lean, lean into how bad it is it, 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 it was so good because we we're walking by and it's just like i've been waiting fuck i like you it was so good. It just came out of nowhere. There's like waiters and waitresses just like dropping over dead. No, like ah, yeah, there 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 are dogs looking around trying to see like what the hell's going on. Pedro, what's up with you, girlfriend? You got anything new? Uh, I do actually. I have this. Uh, well, it's new to me, but uh, to anyone who's actually been paying attention to the kind of equipment that the show is done on, mm-hmm. it's a uh, Behringer Xenix eight hundred two. Never heard of it. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's uh, it was twenty pounds off eBay. Uh, so yeah, I'm just waiting for the uh, last bit of cable that I need to actually plug this into the um, twenty six hundred um, MDX. MDX. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, that this was a very nice find. Um, yeah, no, for twenty pounds off eBay, I'm really not complaining. And of course, I uh, got everything up and running. In the Steam box, yes. B- b- before before it. you talk about that, I want to ask because <laughs> oh, okay. when I got my it, when I got my eight hundred two, it had a very distinct aroma mm-hmm. that I I, <laughs> I have received packages from Ven before, and it just smells like pipe tobacco. Yep. Just, what is what yeah, is yours? Did. What, is, what is your eight hundred two <laughs> smell like? <laughs> Let's is see. It? Let's have a look. Yeah, like I straight up know what Ven's house smells like. It's 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 so weird because it's like a little little capsule of like. Oh, right. it doesn't that's, really that's, smell like anything. That's, that's the Venn smell. You genuinely have that mixer where it's probably got little bits of tobacco and shit in it. it oh, was, it absolutely does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then it was shoved into a box and sealed. So, yeah. Mm. Mm. Lovely. <laughs> Dude, Um, I got a couple of new things. How do new things show up? Um, unexpectedly, I got a new interface in the rack. If you follow me on Discord, I even posted the whole thing on Twitter. It is a digi 003 so like back when they were new they retailed for about 1600 bucks and uh kind of yoinked one for about 
50 something. So I'm going to be playing with that. That's going to be a fun video. It's going to be an adventure to get that up and running. I'm kind of scripting that out. Uh, that, that's kind of it. I'm also waiting on the uh, new control surface that's 19 years old to show up so I can desolder a bunch of things on it and make it work again. That's me. What's the horse up to? Did, did the horse come back from Vegas? No, the horse. See, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And the horse was happening, let me tell you. It's the Steam Let's Day Update. Oh, where are the donut update of the week? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Steam's where I was dead. Going Rip. That. Okay. Rip. Nope. Peace. <laughs> Too late. Steam Rip died. Pedro. Can't use it anymore. Um, <laughs> Steam just broke a new record player count by nearly 300,000. Previous record, 18.5 million. It was about two years ago. This is coming from PC Gamer. All this is going to be in our show notes, but 18.8 million is nothing to sneeze at, man. But uh, that's about 1 million less players uh, actually in game versus uh, the last count. 5.8 million versus 7 million two years ago. But progress. Yeah, it, yes. looks, it looks like a lot of uh, a lot of Valve's investment in uh, China is paying in dividends because most most of those new, new users have actually come from mainland China, mm -hmm. and it seems like uh, Chinese has. I'm not sure if it's like Mandarin or um, Cantonese, whichever, uh, has taken to be the most popular language on Steam now. So, hmm. interesting. Yeah, it it makes sense. You know, uh, it's like um, what is it? I can't remember the exact percentages, but yeah, no, uh, the the amount of people in the world that speak uh, Mandarin is uh, insane. So yeah, it makes perfect sense. And 18.8 uh, million is a very big number of active people concurrently using the platform. And one of the things I didn't see around all of this was uh, any of the other third party stores saying anything. It's like, it, oh, all of a sudden, Tim Sweetie has gone very quiet on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, because Steam's a monopoly, and Epic's trying to save us, Pedro. <laughs> so, so I, I just I just had a thought about um, the active in-game uh, users dropping. Do you think that has anything to do with uh, Valve cracking down on Smurf accounts? Because there are a lot of game, or a lot of accounts that were just idling in games to collect, like, trading cards and shit, right? Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. You know, because they went through a couple of rounds of that in 2019, man. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. yeah. So that 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 would definitely account for a substantial drop in like active in-game. You count active yeah. users, uh, the users that just show up on Friday to get a free game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have pick. You haven't paid us yet. Uh, but uh, <laughs> the price has gone up to one hundred thousand dollars each. <laughs> Linux has increased market share, kind of. It has by a whole of not point not seven, but yeah, that brings us up to a very round uh not point nine percent of the total share. So, you Almost know, according one... to some um, numbers uh, and some logic that was applied against me on Reddit a while back, uh, it means that uh, if we take those uh, eighteen point eight million people that we just talked about and we get like uh not 0.9 percent of those that's 170 thousand people on linux uh so that's uh yeah that's a uh, thing it, it, then, then scrolling through the video cards now uh it looks like the 1060 1060 <laughs> still kind of top dog but it's losing ground and the uh the 580 the 570 and the 5700 xt are actually gaining some traction under linux and steam yeah yeah that's kind of i was looking like oh no they Dead last is the RX 5700. Like, okay, that's it. But I mean, it's 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 a brand new card, and it ha it's only recently gotten like mainstream Linux support, so it makes sense that right. now that number is going up. Yeah, 970 ins, and what is the number one super? It's just the 1060, 1060 yeah, followed by oh, 1050. Hold, 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 hold the 1060. <laughs> yeah, that, for for a while that was that was your bang for your buck card. But hey, man. yeah, no, the the RX 480 actually being in first place on Linux is surprising. But it's it's silly cheap now. Oh yeah, it is. It is. So, I got so, the five seventy for seventy five pounds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. I, th I think I think I saw five ninety for like under one hundred and fifty Canadian. So like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, that is definitely a thing. And hey, man, we're hitting the, like one percent, man. 
Oh, yeah. I bet you're sorry about taking away rocket log. Yeah. Rock, still, rocket logs, man. Rocket I rocket log, yes. <laughs> where where log. you play as a rocket powered Abraham Lincoln. This is where both of these Yahoos just locked in to guarantee that I'm going to give them shite for everything they screw up for the rest of the episode. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you already started, so. It is, it is uh, what it first is. First blood has been drawn. Would you like to submit a review, though? 300% more reviews? Ooh. Yeah, we're talking about it. Uh, Steam is like, yo, man. Since the library update, we've noticed a lot of people are reviewing the games because would you like to review this game? Mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Would you like to review it now? And it's like, how about now? Hey, look, we've noticed you've played this game again. Would you like to update a review? How about a review? <laughs> Leave me alone, Steam. Jeez. <laughs> At least it's not clippy. Yet. Yeah, soon. <laughs> Dude. It's going to be GLaDOS. Uh but, I mean, since the library update, yeah, because that's, you, that's something that you commonly see. If you have not reviewed the game, it is very clear of, like, would you like to review this game or would you like to revise your... So, yeah, 300 tracks, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like, you know, people on YouTube saying, like and subscribe this video. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, yeah, a lot of people just... They're doing their own thing. They're playing the game or they're watching the video and they're not really thinking. It's like, oh, yeah, there's a like button. There's a subscribe button or there's a way for us to leave reviews. So reminding people works. Hmm. Go figure. Oh, yeah. Call, call to actions are like a super powerful, um, super powerful motivator, bo or yeah. motivator for action. <laughs> if you, if you I just don't, ask I people don't even to know where to go with that one. <laughs> that tracks. Hey, man, we get a new version of Proton out. We do. Version 5. It's, yeah, they, they finally did it. Uh, it took about, a, well, it took about two weeks since the actual release of uh, We got a little bit of a break because we got um, Proton GE uh, came bit. out last week. Yeah. I was, I was actually, uh, I was actually surprised. Uh, do, you, do you think they're actually pulling from Gloria Segral? No. No? Nope. I mean, I, I'm sure they appreciate Glorious Egg Roll's, like, uh, initiative in taking the brunt of uh, getting everything done, but, eh. <laughs> Maybe. Mm. In any I, case. I, 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 I mean, uh, they, were, they were silent partners in DXVK for the longest time, so. Right. Who knows, yeah. Right? <laughs> but, yeah, no, with Proton 5, it's basically the wine version that gets, um, the base wine uh, gets updated to 5.0, so you just get the proton treatment on top of all of that. Uh, the big, big change is D9 VIX is now on by default, so all of those um, DirectX 9 games like your first edition Skyrims and your Dragon's Dogma and your Fallout 3s, all of those are now using D9VK if you launch them with Proton. Uh, the change in binaries, because when uh, Wine 5.0 released, uh, something that they did, they changed the way that binaries are, are compiled, so they uh, are registered yeah, the, the, as portable gee. executables. Yes. The, the, they, yes. uh, they actually took that from Proton because they were doing that beforehand. Um, Proton started doing this, but now that, um, now that Wine has adopted this, Proton doesn't have to mm -hmm. do this separately. Um, yeah, that's part of the 300 and something patches that they dropped. I, I love all this fluff. The only thing of any matter in this entire release that everyone, uh -huh. you can now play the goddamn Batman. Oh, uh, yes. Batman. Because it means that De Nuvo actually works with more games now. <laughs> it does work with some games. There's a gang of like games that, you know, would kind of work with work stretching it with a goddamn Batman, however. Uh, if you do want to play with it, Tego, it does launch. Disable the async, you'll get it slightly better. But don't crouch, because if you crouch, you crash. Uh, there's a thread going on right now over at GitHub about this, which I encountered last night. Apparently, Denevo uh, has a thing where, you know, it detects tampering or maybe a pirated copy. It disables your ability to crouch in the game or use the bat, bat claw. So mm. this Proton version kind of gets around it. Like it almost tricks it, but not quite. So when you crouch, mm. crouch it just locks and you get a little error message. It's like, LOL, joke. And so we got to wait you, you, you for an update. Joker, Jeff. Mm. Yeah. Not fun. The, yeah, no the, red uh, scorpion, though. I was a little sad about that. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> boo! Boo! Not Warner Brothers. Micro boo. Team. Uh, they uh, two a uh, couple other things that they're introducing with uh, Proton 5.0. Uh, it's going to start reporting itself as Windows 10 now because Windows 7 is deprecated. <laughs> um, so it's going to try and do that for most games to improve compatibility. Also, uh, 
one interesting note from the release notes is they call out the uh, wine multi monitor support mm -hmm. saying this mm -hmm. is this is the start we're going to start focusing on this so i'm curious to see what valve will come up with in terms of like actual multi monitor support for wine because this will very likely be upstreamed into the main product as well this is true and I yeah being able to spend your game across like three monitors a lot of people like that. I wouldn't mind that. No, I wouldn't mind a reliable way just for like Linux native games to like, hey, Valve, open it on this monitor and play game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's work on that first. Maybe add that to the Steam Play uh, like settings screen. Then just, we can yeah, throw it up and look monitor. at all the awesomeness <laughs> through a new HUD. No, I mean, I can. You two can't, apparently. Uh, Mango it has a uh, version 1, 0.1.0. Uh, it's basically a Vulkan uh, performance hub at HUD. It'll uh, measure CPU usage, GPU usage, uh, DXVK version, frame uh, frames per second, and frame timing. And uh, it has it has a handy little build script. On Fedora, at least, it sorted all the missing dependencies. Uh, and it worked. I, I launched um, Serious Sam Fusion. It shows up in the little corner once you enable the environment variable, and yeah, it's pretty slick. Um, it installs, it just don't work. <laughs> yeah, uh, over here I try to build it, uh, but it is, well, on 1804, uh, there are no Vulkan validation layers. Uh, mm -hmm. The dev file that includes that is not available for 1804. Uh, bomb, bomb. It's available on 1910, I think. Uh, and so I guess I'm waiting for the 2004 update for Neon. Hmm. But on El Cheapo, it does build and it does install. And I, I think I started, what was it? Uh, some Proton Game Void Bastards. Um, and it showed up, so that works. That's pretty cool. Um, I installed it on Debian 10.3 and... Uh, it didn't work so like did, did it just like eat shit or did the, the hud not show up like just the hud didn't show up mm. i was like okay well uh maybe in the future we'll play a thing yeah but no fedora 31 it works <laughs> devil may cry oh yeah speaking of denuvo uh this is uh very good to hear because yes denuvo is one of those things that uh can not always, but sometimes it can uh, prevent you from playing a game on Linux with Proton. But with Devil May Cry 5, that was not necessarily the issue with it. The issue was actually the Media Foundation ones, but they did a good. And now that the game is out and everyone who was going to buy it has bought it mm -hmm. and then refunded it, if they're me, uh, <laughs> they have now decided to remove Denuvo. Mm -hmm. So... That's not a concern anymore, and apparently it was the Nuvo with uh, the five different PC within a day machine activation limits. So if you try that, yeah, <laughs> I ran all into that. I couldn't. I, the day I bought the game, I had to wait twenty four hours to try to install it some more. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I was just gonna say, it's, this is just the ant the Denuvo removal is just in time because Proton Five came out and it has the Denuvo uh, handy dandy handling. Well, so. out, outside of that, I didn't have a problem with it. But you know, mm. when you see the Denuvo uh, getting removed, that's usually because the licensing to renew it expired. It's yeah. coming up, and they're like, "Gah." We, yeah, we, we're not we, paying we you more the, money. Goodbye. No. <laughs> we, we made the bulk of our money. Now it's it's entered that point in the game's life cycle where now we're starting to see like mid double digits uh, discounts on the Steam sales. Pretty much. Yeah. It's definitely <laughs> goodbye, children. Uh, we do have one new game. This graphical juggernaut. Oh, <laughs> oh. Knockout, get, get. daddy. Daddy, please no. Come on, man. Laser bear. Beavers. Um, Knockout Daddy is an action <laughs> speedrun game where you go through levels as fast as possible, killing all of the enemies in each. As the game go, uh, gets harder and harder, you can punch, kick, smash, and pick up the enemies. Laser badgers. Laser badgers, baby. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm getting get some hardcore new grounds, early 2000s. Oh, yeah. man, I saw this, this and flash. I was like, hey, man, I remember being an edgy-ass teenager. Thankfully, there was no way for me to mass market my artistic creations online. Laser well, Beaver, little op though. I did play it. Why did I play it? Then did you spend money on this app stuff? No, it's free to play. You, uh, well, well, that's the thing though. One ninety nine Canadian at least will get you the pay to win pack, which gives you extra lives, more uh, health, and a fancy fucking sombrero too. <laughs> nice. Um, at least they're not being coy about it. <laughs> you do not need an operating system to play this. 
Yeah, you just need a web browser because it's done in Flash, right? <laughs> <laughs> Quit insult. Do not insult Flash like that. Don't, don't um, insult this game, man. Flash is dead. We killed uh, it. <laughs> All right. Coming up next. When do we wait, get our 250,000? Uh, best what? review. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> His that, daddy died in the Laser Beaver War of 2019. Yep. His yeah. life was never the same. After coming up next, uh, we, got, we got some new NVIDIA drivers. Uh, System 76 is a brand new Thelio for you. And, 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 and. Laser and, Beavers. We still don't have $250,000 from Epic. Come on, guys. <sighs> Come on, Tim. Pay up. Well, it's about that time that uh, we put the kibosh on the whole pretense of uh, this is a Linux gaming show, and instead we shill for your uh, displeasure. The game is to see how much money we can <laughs> wring out of you. It is, man. <laughs> pay for play, baby. Yeah. If you want if you want to pay for some play, you can head on over to linuxgamecast.com. But if you mess over that support tab, uh, we got all sorts of fun links for you to click. Um, including uh, PayPal, Bitcoin, LibrePay. We got, we got, uh, we got a store. We got wish lists for all the childrens, especially Jill, our favorite child. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and uh, we got, we got our Patreon. Patreon is the best way to support us. Head on over to yep. Patreon.com/LinuxGameCast, where you too can become a part of our legions of adoring fan. Two fifty a month gets you access to the uh, show notes, but any any level of Discord will get you, or any level of any level I mean, I of guess, Discord. I mean, it is yes. Discord. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, any level of funding will get you access to the Discord channel. But if you want to, you know, suggest us stories or comment on stories that we, if you want to come back and watch this on, train wreck live getting made during the week, man, you can hop in our Google Docs. You can even yeah. add suggestions, comments, hints, allegations. It is kind of brilliant, man. But you also get access to early VODs. We roll those out, man. Sometimes if I'm doing a, like an instructional video or something like that, I'm going to put that up on Patreon. Early access, you know, get some feedback from it. Maybe I need to change some things. Maybe you got some thoughts. I can throw oh, that yeah. in there, man. Uh, game streams, we do those. If you want to skip the line, you can do that. That's absolutely a thing. Or, hey, man, you can even buy your way onto the damn show. But if you do like what we do each and every week, we get an extra hour of content for your face and your ears. Uh, Pre-pre super shows, and that rolls out. You get a customized RSS feed through Patreon that you can use, and it is kind of brilliant, almost a little bit awesome. And if you want to join in live an hour beforehand, 7.30 in Discord, audio only, Come get some of that nonsense. It's a little bit terrifying. Pay, a little bit. If sexy. you pay enough, you can even be a part of the pre-pre super shows in as well. It is, no, man. No, no one's done it yet. You could be the first. Hey, man, we new, got a new, new person who qualifies for it. Indeed, long uh, time, Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Frosty Claus, Frosty the Claw Man. It's a brand new executive producer. <laughs> <laughs> no, Frosty was like really cool, man. He's like, yo, uh, I got done with the schools and got the new jobs. I really enjoyed you, uh, weirdos, and I like listening to you guys in school, so I hope you have a little extra. <laughs> and then, then he screwed up because he's like, "Yo, if you ever need like any brackets or three D stuff printed, let me know." Oh no, you're gonna regret that. We're we're gonna have an army of Franks, you guys. It's gonna Just be an brilliant. Army. It is. Uh, we, we 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 got a store too. If you want to, you know, garb yourself in LGC regalia, we got. Our faces on a t-shirt. We got the weekly daily Wednesday. If you want, if you want to become a member of our army of Franks, you can get a Francophile shirt. Or if you want people, or if you if you want people to use you, you can get a lonely penguin t-shirt for you or your loved you ones. You need to pick out one because we're gonna be going to scale. And tell me which one you want. I'll send it to you. I want the I want the use me one. Give me the, give me the penguin. Can do. Yeah. Pink. Sure. Two X. <laughs> two right. two X or bigger. That's that's what my size is. Let's make it happen. <laughs> All it's, right. it's gonna it's gonna be like a it's gonna be a child small it's gonna be great I'm gonna have to wear it over my face. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. It'll match the yoga pants, guaranteed. Yeah. Let's get into the news nonsense, starting Indeed. with Nvidia. Yep, it is a very much a LGC news uh, segment because Nvidia's put out new drivers, and uh, with this one, uh, the the thing that jumped out at me, uh, this is version four forty dot fifty nine, and yeah, the one that jumped out at me was uh, edit a default file name. Can I, can I ask the a question? Configuration Pedro? file. Hmm? Can I ask a question? Go ahead. It's ray tracing one word or two. Yes. Uh, if you're talking about the technology, it's one. 
If you're talking about tracing rays, then it's two. Because I, uh, I'm but, look, looking at this right here, it just says RTX is on ray space tracing is here. <laughs> okay, so they're not, they're calling the ray tracing technology <laughs> RTX. It, so it leads I me guess, to believe that there's like a eh. Gary tracing, maybe a Frank tracing. <laughs> R- R- Raymond S tracing. I guess to differentiate yeah. between ray tracing and path tracing. M- but m- no, maybe the they're differentiating between like ray tracing if you're if you're talking about Star Wars protagonists. Uh cancer. Um no, the one that jumped out at me was they added the default file name when saving the display configuration file in NVIDIA settings to uh if an existing configuration file is not detected. You know, when you try and save the configuration and it just shows you an empty blank box. That took how many decades to fix NVIDIA? Well, the, the, the other Two. thing they added... <laughs> they, they, uh, they, they also rolled in the Prime Sync and DXVK fix from the Vulcan drivers, the fancy, fancy Vulcan drivers that we talked about a couple weeks ago. And apparently there's a crash that they fixed in X where if you would define more than one screen per GPU, X can eat shit. I don't know. I I think I've done that before. And like I haven't had any crashes, so maybe hmm. maybe this is a new thing that has emerged over the course of their driver development. I have no idea. It could be a thing. Oh, we now have DisplayPort multi-stream. I'm not 100 percent what that is, but we have it. And you will need kernel okay. five five or newer in order to take advantage of it. Mm. Maybe I'll accidentally take advantage of it, and it'll be sexy. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's what that does. All like, right. Oh, do that again. <laughs> maybe it'll help you with your ray tracing. Mm, ray tracing. tracing. <laughs> That's what ray trace is like. He's an amoeba. <laughs> uh, uh, you're such a ray tracist. NVIDIA's cloud gaming service, GeForce Now, is out shamelessly. Mm, that's Shame. right. You, ding, 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 ding. You naughty service. Uh, yeah, uh, you just can't get it on Linux. It's not available for all the regions across the globe. And worse, GeForce Now does not support Linux because GeForce Now is not open for all. Hashtag re. Nope. Um, yeah, uh, get stuffed. Weirdos, get some get some uh, Windows, or some well, Android, so Windows or Android, or an Nvidia Shield because we're still pretending that's not Android. We're Nvidia. <laughs> Nvidia. Uh, 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 which Shield are you talking about again? You know Shield. Yeah, the Shield. Okay, the, it's it's the one with Agent Coulson. Yeah, yeah. Because I tried it back in the day on the Shield, not that Shield. You know, the previous Shield, not the Shield before that. Uh, you know, the middle shield. Uh, and um, it wasn't great. Uh, uh, you know those videos and those GIFs of, like, the uh, Stadia um, input lag? Yeah, that that was the level of experience I had on the shield um, with the shield controller. That, that was... Um, that was my experience. So maybe it's gotten so, better now because everyone um, that is on Windows is saying it's like, oh, maybe it's good now. Well, yeah. so th- this this is supposed to be like in the browser. You're supposed to be able to point your browser to the GeForce Now service and play your games. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm I'm gonna say it. All most most of the guts of all modern browsers are shared amongst their various binaries for different OSs. But given given the uh, startup screen there, it looks like you actually kind of need a plugin for your browser. So my my I'm hazarding a guess that this just is copy protection stuff that they can be asked to implement under Linux. It could be. I definitely got the SADS advantage. Stadia Stadia worked um like in 2018 when I was beta testing it, and I'm. It's there. It's a thing. Uh, Google hasn't remembered that they released it, so they haven't killed it yet. It's got that going for it. <laughs> yep. um, the, it's really a damn shame. By all accounts, everyone I've heard talking about uh, GeForce Now that has been in the closed beta, like it's pretty damn good, all things considered, because it's able to do things like Stadia, no resolution options or anything. It's like, hey, look, we can kind of do 4K at 30. Stadia, uh, but uh, GeForce Now is more focused on like, hey, would you like... 1080p 60. It's like yes, like a, a real boy. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I mean, and I think RTX. Are, you can get Ooh. RTX on some 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 Rayman tracing. You can trace Ray. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you, you gotta you gotta remember here. Nvidia doesn't love Linux. Nvidia doesn't hate Linux. They just see it as a market to sell shit to. And you got to remember that at least on Linux, most of that market is enterprise and not Linux gamers. That's who are that's who are buying those cards and droves. So they'll they'll support they'll support the Vulcans they'll support the OpenGLs, but you know 
If you want, if you want, if you want them games. Will they support the bandwidth needed to use it without going over usage gaps? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe streaming's a bad idea, and you just want to build yourself a nice little box in order to play your games. Well, System76 has got the new hotness, the 3990X, at starting at 3,798, or question mark. Man, we're about to fuck up that Whoa. ore, man. What can 64 cores do for you, then? Dude, all kind of things, man. Your desktop has full command over your CPU. And t- they, listen, man, look at that. You you can apply a circular motion in 44 seconds, Jordan. So shut your whore mouth. I mean, I can do that with uh, enough whiskey. I can do so. that. Yeah, you can do that faster in GIMP. <laughs> you, you can do that faster with the trip to the liquor store. Can you I'm compile just saying. the kernel in 24 seconds? Huh? Yes, what uh, okay, thought. Maybe not. As Miss Piggy thought. can. <laughs> Render a blender seat in 76 seconds. Classroom. Hey. That's, a, that's a Dr. Seussism, if ever. Can you render Do, a blender? Maybe. <laughs> hey, man, this has got their Atari case. I know they didn't want to call it that, but that's what it is. Uh, Wood. Bunch of options we can design and buy. I... I took the Pepsi challenge. You tried it. <laughs> I did. And I, I didn't go crazy. I didn't do the like, oh, let's just max out everything and get that stupid price that no one would ever actually configure. I did a realistic, okay, I was like, yo, if I was going to get a System 76 workstation for the nonsense that we do here, which technically, I mean, it's like real stuff. Um, using the 64 core, I maxed out at a measly 7,894 wet stinky American caches, which... To my shock, I was like, that's really not bad at all if you're thinking about a workstation. What did we end up with that? 32 gigs of RAM and a 2070, which, you know, along with the 64-core thread wrapper, that's not bad. However, you have an option for GPU-1 followed by GPU-2. I was like, hmm, okay. Well, GPU-1, give me a 2060 Super and a 2070. He's like, no. And I was like, okay, what if I get a 2070? Can I get a 2060? No. Um, What... What, what can I do if I get a 2060? You can get a 2080 or a 2080 Ti. He's like, well, that's unnecessary. What about a 2070? He's like, a 2080, 2080 Ti. Uh, what about like the super 2080 thing? And he's like, no refunds on that. And it's like, okay, never mind. This is legitimately an issue. You'll need to fix that. System 76, call me. Um, Because if you're building an editing box, especially for something like you would use a box like this for, it's called DaVinci Resolve. And... Mm-hmm. What you want in an ideal configuration, which this one's not there yet, and that's why I have a 2060 on the wish list, 2060 Super, is a <laughs> low-power primary display card followed by a dedicated one for rendering. Uh, just a big brain's chungus with a lot of memory RAM and a lot of power that's only going to be used when you're rendering. Blender, same thing. You can take advantage of two. You don't need NVLink or anything like that. That's literally a checkbox option in DaVinci Resolve. It's like, yo, would you like this perfectly same configuration that most people use? Yes, I would. You're missing sales on people setting up uh, systems that by limiting them to, if you're going to get a 2060, you got to get a 2080. I'm going to get a 2060, I'm going to get a 2070. I, yeah, I, I was, even Dell, even Dell actually um, went, it's like, oh, when I called them out on uh, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, they went... Yeah, no, that's not supposed to happen. So they went back and they fixed the whole being able to pick the i7 XPS 13 with the 1080p screen. Mm-hmm. Instead of the moment you picked the 1080p screen, you were capped at the i5. Cool. So I, 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 I went, I went through the, I went through the purchasing thing as well because I figured I'm going to build an AMD system because mm-hmm. why the fuck not? I want, I want to, I want to see how much that'll set me back. That was only about six grand mm. um, for for the dual 5700 XTs. Um, which I mean, it's not the worst. I get, so here and he, and here's the thing: like all all of us are stifling down that urge to say, "Well, if you just build your system, it's going to mm-hmm. be a lot cheaper." But a lot of people don't want to go through it, and it's good to see that we have vendors. Who you don't have to worry to about going through. That, more importantly, you get a warranty for this. And yeah, you get, you, you, you get support. You get support. You can be like, ring, that's the thing. Ring, 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 ring. <laughs> Shit's not working. And that's definitely patient. something I'd like to see from System Seventy Six. Is like a work. They would have to do a freeze on Pop OS for like a workstation build or it's not so much a moving target. Like it would be pretty easy. I could sit back and like set up like a DaVinci, like here's a configuration for that. You know what? Send me two and I'll get send one back like that. Cause if you just send me one, I'm going to keep it. Um, <laughs> but I, I would like to see a configuration like that for a Threadripper system that you just get like a turnkey multimedia solution. That was a 
configured. But then again, that probably be a bad idea because then you'd have to offer some type of support for it on top of everything else. Forget I said anything. Moving on. Dix fix. Oh yeah. One five four baby. Bug fixes and improvements. Uh, is it going to melt your mind? Is it going to melt your face? Maybe because Anno seventeen oh one has been fixed with incorrect texture filtering. And The Witcher, not two, not three, but one. Witcher got clouds, baby. Throw a cloud to your Witcher. Forgotten Realms, Demon Stone. You know, that um, Forgotten Realms game that most people like to pretend didn't exist because it's literally... What the hell are you talking about? That game was great. Like, it straight up was. Yeah, it was no, the same engine. it was. It was the same engine from Return of the King, which was a great yep. brawler. Demon Stone <laughs> is a great brawler. I love the fuck out of that game. It is. I'm glad that it's getting some support with the newest version of Dexfix. But we are into minority, Jordan, because if you actually look at reviews for that game, they're very meh. I've never heard of the game, <laughs> but the fact that the both of you like it makes me, I'm, I'm going to be contrarian. It's like, yeah, I'm never going to play it now. You already hate it. Yes. No, that, yeah. that's actually a very fun game. I The first time I played it was actually on the PS2. Patrick Stewart's in it. it. Yeah. It, it was a very fun game to play. I, I, I really enjoyed Demon Stone. It was a solid yeah. ass brawler. <laughs> yeah. So that's good news, but do you think we'll be able to play when, no, more importantly, here's the better question. When do you think we'll be able to enjoy some, if not all of this goodness on Wayland? You can already enjoy a uh, proton on Wayland. Most everything works just fine, but not everything. And to try and combat that, I guess, uh, you have the Wine Whalen project, which is, um, well, it allows for DX9 slash DX11 and Vulcan games using a pure Whalen and Wine slash DXVK. And currently, it's very limited to, um, let's say, oh, hey, Arch they're, Linux they're, they're or Manjaro. Using Manjaro. Yeah. AMD GPU with Vulcan support, uh, Mesa 19.3 or later with Wayland, uh, Vulcan and EGL support. Yep. Um, Weston based compositor, uh huh, or WL roots, SDL and F audio. Kind of need those if you're going to play any games on Wayland. Uh, because if you're going to be hey, guess fancy, what? maybe. I mean, no, 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 there are no games that okay. uh, support wayland natively unless they have sdl um and e-sync or f-sync support i guess those would be uh, optional but yeah no it you're limited to amd gpus on arch or manjaro which is arch you still or manjaro. Better, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> if you really want to get your dx9 dx11 vulcan games on pure wayland the only downside you have to use wayland but Oh, and a couple other small issues uh, you're going to encounter. No controller support, no GDI app support, launchers are not going to work, OpenGL support's not going to be there, no custom cursors. But hey, it's a start, and with some luck, Waylon will actually do something this decade. I got a feel that this, this decade, we're going to get some traction. So here, here's the thing. I brought I brought this up forever ago, but like, especially for a lot of the older Unity Ghetto games, mm -hmm. Wine is really going to be the only way you can like play these games reasonably under Wayland if you don't want to go through X Wayland. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad yep. someone is actually putting in the legwork because that's going to be huge for game preservation under Linux, especially for a lot of like, yeah, no, no one is going to go back and update those old Unity three, no. Unity four titles. No, those will run on X, and that's it. There's no STL in there for your mama. You're going to have to play them on Wine if you want a Wayland only system. And I genuinely feel bad for you know. Wayland, Wayland, like, you know, snap packages, flat packs and all that. They're competing against something, the worst opponent in the world, which is good enough. We have X. X is good I, enough. I, I also kind of want to throw the blame at Canonical because for a good like four years there, they're like, no, we're, we're going to we're going to split development efforts for Mirror, this thing that we abandoned. I, I, I genuinely believe that Wayland probably would have gotten a lot more traction if there wasn't sort of this limbo, will they, won't they thing introduced by the mirror displays server. How long did Fedora take to? Uh, I mm -hmm. say it's the default on the workstation now. Yeah, the, uh, they, 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 they changed they, they, that they were, in 27. They were, they were shipping it as an option since I believe Fedora 17. How long has it been yeah. an option with a uh, Ubuntu? Mirror. No, that's not what I asked. How long has it been an option with Ubuntu? Uh, a while. Uh, it's just both sides of the story. All right, uh, go to. <laughs> there's there's no both sides. <laughs> anyways, anyways, enlightened centrism aside. Um, yeah, the uh, 
Epic Mega Grant was awarded to the Godot Project. They're getting about 250,000 Gs. Uh, so, no, it's really... Oh, my God, they've sold out. Tim Sweeney's they, eating the world. They really they really have. Um, so, yeah. Tim, I've uh, heard of him. Tim Sweeney eats planets. It's He's basically Unicron, you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, they're, they're, they, they got it for uh, graphical development. Uh, so they're going to be improving their renderer. They're going to also be improving GD Script um as well uh so good on good on them for that there's a lot of there's a lot of tinfoil hat stuff going mm-hmm. on in, in in the reddits nope. about why, uh-huh. why this is i mean you, you you could just say like a rising tide raises all ships but they're there then you you brought up the, the that's a politer theory. way uh, than saying some <laughs> ignorant motherfuckers gonna talk about shit they don't know anything about Oh yeah, like how how they're uh, how what how they're uh, how they're doing this to essentially you don't put, put a stop our unity development. Th- this is all <laughs> only to attack unity. Yes. Oh, I, oh, I I don't I don't doubt for a second that there's some like eight dimensional chess going on. This this was definitely a calculated. I don't think effort. Sweeney can count that high. Well, I mean, Sweeney doesn't have to count that high as business analyst. I mean, yeah, he doesn't eight. have to. He just pays someone to do it for yeah. him. But mm-hmm. but I mean I mean like here's the thing though. This this, this <laughs> will describe this will, malice. <laughs> I, I I would say my, my 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 good faith reasoning for this would probably be they want to accelerate development of high, highly wanted features so that the developers can start churning out more games that Epic can then make exclusives to the Epic Store. They can sell that, them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah. I mean they, they 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 don't care if you're using Unreal because they well, get a cut for Unreal. They'll get. They already made their money if it's going to be on the Epic Store. Tencent made sure of that. One of the things I want to throw in is to <sighs> Epic Unreal Engine is not in competition with Unity. It's not. No. Just that, 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 that's two different levels of dev. And same with yeah. Godot. Godot is closer to Unity. It's something that you're going to pick up to learn with. Mm-hmm. So, hey, man, they got the cash. That's cool. 250,000 bits of cheddar can go a long way. And that's fantastic. It's an open source project. Sky's not falling. And uh, (laughs) yay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's, it's it's 250k less from the exclusive fund. So that's okay by me. A a literal (laughs) a literal drop in the bucket, Pedro. It's it's plans within plans, young Atreides. But I mean, y'all should still sub to their Patreon because community support for Godot Mm -hmm. is a good thing. Yes. All right. (laughs) Uzo. Uh, That's an alcohol yeah. drink, isn't it? Uzo? Uzo, the, yeah. Uzo yes. Uzo, yeah. Uzo, I mean, yes. I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of the devs were drunk on Uzo when they were writing this. <laughs> Uzo, the, uh, the Nintendo Switch emulator, a.k.a. Ven's best chance for not having to buy a Wii U. Um, is uh, they, they have a new feature release uh, that's experimental. It's Vulcan. Uh, we talked about this a little bit more, but now it's available for your download and perusal. Uh, so they, the is blog post goes... shirtless? Yes. Yes. That's you, spend, you, spend, you you spend a you can spend a good chunk of the intro to that game just completely naked. It's great. It's also fun when he kicks the the chests when he's not wearing boots and he breaks his foot and he just hops around in pain. Mm. It's pretty good. Um, but anyways, uh, it's always much much like RPCS three or the Dolphin Project. These guys have decided to like make a little blog blog post explaining some of the the challenges and stuff they had to overcome in order to implement. Um, Vulcan, uh, Vulcan renderer for a Nintendo Switch emulator, and as it turns out, most of the uh, most of the Nintendo Switch games out there are not using uh, NVN. They're mostly using OpenGL. And the thing about OpenGL and NVIDIA is NVIDIA does some spooky <laughs> hardware shit for OpenGL to improve performance. Uh, and a lot of games apparently are just taking advantage of the fact that the NVIDIA hardware software stack will just do shit for you. Uh, which presents a bit of a problem when you're trying to rebuild that behavior in Vulkan because then you don't have the hardware routines to automatically say like, oh, you're trying to do this? Well, let me just uh, speed that along through for you. So you're going to have some mm-hmm. problems. They basically say this, this, is not, this is not a cure-all. When, if, if, they, if they start putting out Nintendo Switch games that are using Vulkan, this will be, you'll, you'll lose a lot of the uh, overhead that you have to generate for here. They talk about how they had to make a new shader compiler um, to uh, spit out both, both Spur V and uh, GLSL, which is kind of interesting. You can read all this because links in the in the show notes. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. they even give a little. Uh, oh, appa- apparently uh, Bayonetta uses some features that are uh, <laughs> sped up via OpenGL <laughs> hardware acceleration that they had to yeah. go through some problems to re- <laughs> reproduce under Vulcan. Bayonetta is just broke, broken all the emulation um, outside of uh, the Windows only emu. Uh, what's it called? 
DMU. Uh, the, CMU. The CMU. CMU. Yeah, the <laughs> Wii U one. Which does work with Vulcan under wine, but I was like, that's too many steps and it's not terribly performant. That's good news, but that's not the only Vulcan uh, bits we have for this week. Waka waka. No, it is not. Uh, this one is uh, called Chew Man. It's Chew Man Bless Vulcan. You. Yes, it's a 3D Pac-Man style game written in C++ Chew Man sounds using like a Marvel, Vulcan SDK though, and SDL. At least it uses SDL, so I'll give him that. But yeah, it is 3D, um, not Pac-Man for legal reasons. Mm -hmm. And you... Well, you control Chew Man, and <laughs> you go around eating coins? Uh, I guess those are coins. Not uh, coins. Uh, so apparently they're the souls of the dead because Chew Man is a demon. Oh. <laughs> okay. Is All he right. single? <laughs> I, no, no, because there's there's Mrs. Chew Man, uh, but the, their their relationship is on the rocks from what uh, I hear. Vulcan I rendering, there animation is. from loaded 3D assets, water rendering, instancing, yes. Overlays and GUI rendering. Those are important in a game. Um, and post didn't, you didn't you try to build it? Nope. Uh, no. I didn't. I didn't. So Not I, even a little I bit. I cloned the Git, but yeah, I, I didn't try. <laughs> so I, I, I took a crack at it. It requires something called uh, CPPFS, which is a C++ library for accessing file system contents. Uh, it's not provided by Fedora, and it doesn't seem to want to build on my box. Mm. So uh, I can't build Chumen, <laughs> and I can't report on it. I was actually going to try it out with uh, with the Mango HUD, but uh, yeah, I build, I compiled like a Material Painter, and I had to install Node.js earlier this week. I'm going to build out I'm like man. Mm. <laughs> no, don't worry, I'm sure there's a PPA for you. Yeah, no. If this requires the Vulcan validation layers, that I can't build it either. <laughs> womp 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 womp. A PPA for Debian. I wonder if they do have PPAs. I mean, it's it's effectively the same. You can. Uh, it's, oh yeah, I guess I could. I don't hate myself that much. Um, <laughs> it, there's it's, just a it's couple called, of packages it's, you need it's, to it's install. It's called the DDA. Dance, dance. <laughs> ah! It's called Linux gaming. Getting to know Lupus, the ultimate Linux game launcher. Yes, it is the ultimate. Period. No question about it. There is no competition for it, except for like those other two projects. <laughs> I, yeah, that, that that aren't doing as much as uh, Lupus is. Yeah, but uh, the Newegg actually retweeted this uh, earlier today, so we included it in the show notes. Mm -hmm. it's I a think this dandy. is a Newegg official website. Yeah, <laughs> but as I was saying, it's a it's a handy dandy guide to getting started on our favorite baguette and blunt fueled gaming platform, Lutris. Uh, one one thing it does do in here, which uh, I think deserves some highlighting and some credit, is it shows off some of the GOG integration and how to set that up. Oh, oh, what's that? That's, that's a lovely shade of purple, those folks uh, waiting for a Linux Galaxy client have turned. Uh, but yeah, no, Lutris is actually really easy to get set up. If you're using uh, the Lutris website, um, you can just click to add uh, games. If you search through, if they have a Lutris runner for them, uh, it'll pop up a wizard that'll run you through it. It's actually pretty handy. That's how I got uh, the Witcher, my copy of The Witcher 3, the GOG one, uh, running under the Linuxes. And it's pretty painless. I still say it's one of the, if the game is not on Steam and it's not actively supported by Proton, Lutra, Lutris is a uh, very good um, intermediary to get your games up and running. The emulator Plus, supports, supports really good too. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Al al although now, 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 <laughs> now, now that Steam has RetroArch, Strider, Strider, you're going to have to come up with some answer to that. You can do that well, right after you finish implementing dark mode. <laughs> This, this the, is GTK, uh, homie. We don't need those thinking dark mode. Yes. <laughs> dark mode. Nah, 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 yeah, nah, no, no, uh, no. The moment that retro arch, <laughs> the moment retro arch drops on Steam, it's like, there goes my use for Lutris. Mm. <laughs> uh, there, there, there's still other stuff like um, games that have open source engines. That, I, I, uh, listen, man, you can Steam. use currently, right now, as of time of recording, you can crouch in Batman Arkham Knight using Lutris. Where's your god now? That's what I thought. Dead. Mm. Because God is dead. <laughs> Come, right. Coming up next, we were, throw, we're throwing some chairs at Dark Hope. and Maybe we can solve a puzzle or two. Welcome, welcome back to our Bee Gees worshipping cult, a.k.a. the Chairquisition, where the accused game must survive trial by Fedora, Neon, and Debian, and then, and only then, the question be asked. This is fun. This week, we're taking a look at Dark Hope by Broken Bunny Studios, Inc. It's done on Unity. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks US. 
What is it? Dark Hose? Dark Dark Horse? No, Dark Hope. Dark Hose. Puzzle. Dark Hose, man. That's a different game. Stay tuned for the after after shows for that one. Um, Dark Hope is a puzzle adventure game set in a steampunk world where electricity started and ended its existence with the light bulb. Towering clockwork puzzles and archaic symbols cover the halls. Strange rifts of light span the hallway. Uh, we got to thank the developer for sending us some keys over the curator connect. Mm -hmm. So thank you, thank you, Broken Bunny. And let's get into it. How did how did uh, how did it play on uh, the Debs? Oh man, Matt, my favorite part of the Dark Hose is the inability <laughs> to go into a windowed mode, man. Because I like my Dark Hose full screen. I really do, man. So over here on Debian ten point three, they did another point release update with a thread record nineteen twenty X thirty two gigs of RAM and VMA drives powered by a twenty sixty displayed at UHD which I turned down to 1080p for this one. Yeah, if you like full screen, I hope you do, because that's option A and also option A. Um, if you like stuttering frames, because it does claim to hit 60, but it sure doesn't feel like it. Do you like oily smears disguised in motion as motion blur? Pedro disabled it, man. You, you, why mm -hmm. did you spare them that wonderful, like, man, thing that blur? You oh, no. It, thank goodness that there's an option to disable it now because at first uh, there wasn't they actually fixed it so good on them that's legitimately a thing uh well if you like all of that nonsense son i got the game for you man and this is it uh i ran around mostly empty rooms as you're seeing on the video version i let me describe an empty room for our audio listeners it's an empty fucking room i was maybe get like a shelf in it a chair uh you read some things turn a few knobs visit the portal room and watch your furps just tank for fuck all reason. Um, and, you know, unless the lighting was broken on my end, everything was frighteningly well lit. So you can genuinely see your herking and jerking all the way to various items and attempt to interact with them. I say attempt because you have kind of like this dot right there and it's RNG. If something does something like half the time, mm -hmm. you got to wait for it. Pedro will expand on that. Then you get bored after about 30 minutes of wandering and reading shit. Uh, I played tech demos with more depth than this, man. And I'm unable to call Dark Hope a tech demo since that would be an insult to tech demos. This is like stock assets, horrible performance, empty rooms. I even tried it on Proton where you can actually see the frame pacing all fucked up. Uh, devoid of a reason to explore the environment. That's definitely a thing this game has. Uh, good times was... Not had by all, man. At 20 bucks, I uh, no. Just, hey, thanks for sending that. Use, like, you're like, oh, you're a stupid guy. You know, was use that as motivation to make something better than this because, yeah, there, there's nothing to this that screams fun. Just a big solid no. So yeah, on uh, Fedora 30 64 bit with the uh, i7 6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti, when you click play, it launches, and you know Wazding does about what you expect it to. Yeah, like Ben mentioned, interacting with the world is a little imprecise. You got like this little white dot reticle. Sometimes it Matthew, lights up, but you can. Matthew has a good point. Look, they're uh, not even centered. The text on the notes this is near nope, the middle. Nope. <laughs> oh, 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 we'll get to that. Oh yes. Um. But yeah, uh, you some, sometimes the little white dot will light up, sometimes it won't. It doesn't have any impact on whether or not you can interact with the thing or not. Uh, and oh god help you if you're looking through drawers trying to find stuff, because you may just <laughs> open and close the same drawer about nine times before you actually get to the thing that you're trying to do. Um, yeah, lots of, lots of stock assets abound, and uh, <sighs> Steam Overlay was reporting a solid 60, but you know, frame timing was way the fuck off. Um, bl motion blur was a bit of a mess because like sometimes there's some text on the walls and like that would blur and that doesn't look too good. Like when you're standing still, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty messed up. Um, so fun wise, I will give the game credit that the name of their janitor in the personnel file is in fact, Jan Etor because apparently they're <laughs> scrubs fans. Uh, the rest kind of, kind of, I mean, they got like the ooky spoopy atmosphere going on with like the sounds of gears creaking and water pipes expanding and contracting. Um, so it works out pretty well, even though there's like no real opponent here. Um, there, you got some, sometimes there's some like splotches on the wall that might be blood. I, I don't know. could be barbecue sauce. Apparently it's chili. Cause that was being served that day, uh, on the lunch <laughs> menu. I, f I, I managed to piece that bit together. But yeah, mm -hmm. basically you wander around, find out where you, you can't go, 
backtrack, look through all the rooms, find a litany of post-it notes and memos that will eventually reveal what you need to do. There is no log. You actually have to make your own notes in the game. And they give you a painfully small notepad to do it with as well. Um, that, that's where that non-center text comes from is like, it's basically a web form. But here's the thing, though. When it comes to actually solving the puzzles, the, the janky interaction makes that makes what you're doing, what you found out you need to do, difficult. And that's bad. Uh, like th th this thing right here, it was a little hit or miss when you hit the numbers, whether or not the thing would rotate. Um, same thing with like punching buttons in on some of the keypads. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, I can appreciate that they're trying to go for like a mist approach where you got to sort of figure out what's going on on your own. But, you know, the thing is, I, I never really liked mist, so I'm going to give it one chair. They tried. I liked mist. I liked mist a lot. I played through all of the, uh, well, I played through mist, riven, and uru. So, yeah, I like mist. Sequel to mist? Yes. Uh, but. It launches just fine, um, Dark Hope, uh, or Dark Hose as the case may be. It looks very unity -y, uh, as in, you know, there, it looks like uh, those games that were made from store-bought assets. The sounds are odd, but I'm pretty sure that's what they were going for. Actually, in the sounds department, I have absolutely no complaints. Like, the eerie atmosphere is very much there. The controls are wazed and the directional arrows, and you don't really have a way to change them. Uh, the performance, it's weird, because on the high settings at 1440p, 2560 by 1440, uh, I'm getting anywhere between 45 and 60 FERPs. On medium, it shoots all the way up to 115, so it's like, okay, that, that, that's a thing. Um, as for the whether or not it's fun, you know, the thing that makes or breaks a video game, for the first 30 minutes, and 17 of which you're watching right now, uh, <laughs> I was running around not really knowing what the hell I was, uh, I was doing or what was going on. There's a lot of reading you need to do, and... I like puzzle games. Uh, I do. Uh, in fact, uh, if there's one thing that the three of us can agree on, it's puzzle games. And, well, this one just doesn't seem to cut it. Um, there's a lot of text on screen that you have to read. And uh, the more text you force me to read to get through your game, the least likely I am to enjoy it. Because, especially in a puzzle game... Jordan brought up Mist. Okay, uh, Mist has very little to no text on screen for most of the puzzles. You can solve them without reading any text, without listening to anyone talk. It's just intuitive in that respect. And nothing is intuitive about um, Dark Hose. Um, but what really killed it for me was the inertia whenever you try to do anything. When you start moving, or when you interact with something. Like Jordan mentioned, you uh, open and close the same drawer two or three times because it takes half a second between you uh, clicking and the drawer opening. So, yeah, it feels like it's broken, but then again, it's being sold for £15.49, so one share. Mm. Mm -mm. All right. Well, seems to be some kind of consensus here, looks like. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, what, what, what do you think? Yeah, dude. Um, this, I, like, maybe if, I, I don't even know, maybe if this was like early, way early access of like, here's my idea. Cause like right now, I even watched you trying to sort through the safe thing. Everything looks alike, man. Mm -hmm. Like it's real easy to get lost, not because of any other reason than, well, this room looks like this room, like this room, this room, but no, this one has a random safe. This one has some rather other random assets in it. And yeah. it, it definitely lacks that. Why should I be doing this at any point? Because Jello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give at, me at a motivation. The, at, I, at least according to the trailer, it's Jello. I'm saying I need more motivation other than, well, the dude took the time to send us review copies because that only lasted <laughs> for like 30 minutes. And I was like, okay, I did my part. Right. Well, there we have it. Coming up next, you spin me right around, baby. 
Right round, like a hammer, baby, right Like round, a hamster, round, baby. Round, round. <laughs> Spinny hamster. If you'd like to tell us a uh, penguin and a banana. story about how you fuse a penguin with a, with a banana, you can totally do that. You can go to linuxgamecast.com, you hit the contact button, and you fill out the form. It's pretty self-explanatory in and of itself, but if... For some reason, after watching that review, uh, you think that it w- it's a good idea to send us your game. Well, make, please do send us your game. We'd be very happy to look at it. Just uh, make sure you include three keys in that email, or you send us three keys over Curator Connect, or give us a tar.gz that we can share, because we're all about sharing. Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. Sure. Sharing yeah. is herring. <laughs> sharing is herring. It's a fish. Ah, yes, the red sharing. Red fish, red herring. <laughs> Moo. But <laughs> maybe uh, you can do like Brandon, who is okay. uh, one of the people uh, behind one of the games that we were talking about last week. And it's like, uh, how you guys featured hammer dongers in your podcast was completely amazing and hilarious. Pretty much got the essence of the game right. Cheers from hammer dongers team. So, yeah, kudos, Jordan. You got that right. <laughs> dong, dong, dong. <laughs> Man, Banana I, hammock. I, I was like so blown away by that. I immediately had to go back and figure out what hammer dongers was again. Um, <laughs> It's, it's 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 like four player bomberman pretty much. That's yeah. pretty cool. And Jordan did a, an admittedly uh, all right intro spiel for the game, and uh, apparently they liked it. So there you go. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Why is this not on Steam? Because compared to what we just played on Steam, <laughs> yes, please, anything. <laughs> it it is on itch, and I think it's pay what you want at the moment. Yeah, it's give, on itch. Yeah, give him some coin, man. That's kind of brilliant. Mm. Well, um, yeah, I wish we had m- more hate mail. Why don't you send us some hate mail? We got plenty of YouTube comments. Please do. But yes. hey, man, use the <laughs> use the forum. Use oh, we did get some hate mail from uh somebody who did use the forum. Check this out. They oh. read. They even read and avoided our spam gob. Uh, okay. To ask <laughs> us if they could give us money so they could write a review for some fucking software. Oh, they can give us money to write the review, and then we won't read it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it will just never go up. <laughs> well, I thought about that, and I was like, because we get, we used to, this is one of the reasons we have the spam golem now. But I was like, you motherfuckers, like, read that, went through the manual process of like, hey, would you like to do a sponsored post? And, you know, anyway, I always write back <laughs> a happy, fun sentence or paragraph that involves... Two words, eagle, semen, guaranteed. <laughs> ah! Caca. Caca, motherfuckers. I, I, just, I don't think we're going to do better than that, so. Let's cue the music. You can always find us around 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Put us all over your face, chest, and neck. If you're a Patreon, if you're our boss financing us, come join us an hour early at 7.30 in Discord. LGC Live Channel will be there to talk your gorgeous little sexy ears off. If you want to get in touch with me, at Vinstone on the Twitters or just at Vin on mast.linuxgamecast.com because that's the thing. Pew, pew, pew. I'm just a Brody too. I'm Jordan. You can find me on Twitter at the Burning Fool or on our Mastodon. I'm Frojo at mast.linuxgamecast.com slash bird. If when you ejaculate, it goes pew, please go see a doctor. Never. On the other hand, I am Pedro Matos. You can find me at an accounted for on Twitter. I suppose I am also on mass.linuxgamecast.com at an accounted for, uh, but Twitter, you know, You know what? YouTube's going to try to hit us for that. They're going to try to hit us for that, Pedro, and I'm going to argue it on, like, <laughs> medical terms. Yeah, you're, 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 I mean, Pedro, your, your, your pee-pee goes pew-pew, doesn't it? 
No. No, no it's a black. It <laughs> just, just Sopranos it. Just like, <laughs> cut, to, cut to black before you can even get a response out. I love it. Ah, uh, we're going to thank all our special, lovely Pew Pew Patreons. Pew Treons? No. <laughs> yes, the uh, Patreons. <laughs> our executive producers <laughs> like uh, Herr Theron and uh, Mr. Foxdog and Empty and Haplo and the Atomic oh Ass. Mike G. Mike G. Barbara. Barbara. <laughs> and, and, yeah, I said Aldius. We got Haplo. We got Mac Geek. We got, we got, we got Scott. Scoot and Frost, Frosty. Frosty. Yeah. Frosty. Yeah. Frosty the Claw Man is there. Frost Woo. Claw. Woo. <laughs> and our regular ass producers like David S. Smash the G. Michael. Egal. Jolly. Top Cool. Gaius Machi. Ya Max Yabo. Stony <laughs> Fish. Krez Che, Mr. Alert, Michael N, Brad S, Massaroni, Dan W, Nibbin, Luke W, Luke Matt C, w, Mike Dirty W, Dean, the Christopher C, Rydiker. Fraser, Aldius, <laughs> Nicole, again, Costa, <laughs> Dirty Dean, Nunder Cheat, Nova, Rudy, I didn't Grayson, forget about you, Rudy, Igor, Rudy, Scott, Rudy, again. Rudy, Rudy, <laughs> Ryan, Joe Angel, oh, Evangelo, Douglas, uh, Bram, we got Gonzo Paul. 2000, Jupiter Broadcasting, Bell, Rick, Rock, Ooh. and, and of course, Mango, sir. <laughs> Ryan, Nathan, the Admiral JT, and yeah, Brock. <laughs> what did we learn this week, gentlemen? Never face Brock with a Charmander. Never face Crocs with steel toes. Unless you two are wearing steel tro toed Ugg boots. Steel troes. Yes, to steal tr throws. O obey the throws. <laughs> steal throw. It's my new Pokemon move. It's got 70 base power and like 50 accuracy. Uh, Too many choices. I used to play Pokemons, but no. <laughs> Five dudes.